today uh, I'll try to explain better how to to efficiently use HydroCAD and, and MD tools uh, together. Uh, during last uh, webinar, I've been designing this um, this manifold, which you are uh, seeing here, and. Um, when I did that, uh, I did not import the uh, HydroCAD uh, XML file. Uh, so I have the result, although last time it was made in, uh, in SolidWorks, but uh, I, you know that we can import and export uh, MBXML file that uh, quickly allow us to go from uh, md 2 in SolidWorks to md 2 in Inventor and vice versa. So today I'm going to use uh, md 2 on, on Inventor. And um, I have uh, built my block, and this block has been designed without uh, a HydroCAD diagram, but with uh, the diagram just uh, on on paper. So there is no hydro schematic here. Um, and let me highlight with a pen. So basically, uh, we all know using MD tools that we have the model browser, a cavity library, and the hydro schematic. Hydro schematic is uh, needed when you import the hydro XML. So this block has been designed manually without the use of a Hydro XML file. Now I want to import an XML file here to verify that my block exactly is matching the diagram, which is a, could be a common scenario if you adopt later HydroCAD or if you rush with the, with the block and then you want to uh, take a closer look uh, with, uh, with uh, the diagram. This is the first part of today's uh, webinar. The second part, I will do a change. I will modify my diagram and import again the XML file in order to make a revision. And then I'll show you a hidden command that uh, uh, most of you may not know, which is the command to compare manifolds. So we not only will make a revision, but we also compare the two blocks, the initial one and the second one to find out which differences are in, uh, in, the, two, in the two manifolds. So let us start. Um, for those that did not attend the last, uh, uh, last webinar, uh, I gave a suggestion uh, when, when looking at diagrams on paper when designing with MD tools. So basically when we look at this diagram and when we need to define a net, net information in MD tools, it's always better to give good naming to the net. So for me, this is a net will be called A. This net will be called B. And of course it, it will be made for with all the segments that are linked to the B port. By giving good naming to the net, it will be easier to design the manifold, to verify the manifold. And also in this case that I am going to import the diagram into MD tools, it will be easier really to map, map the net name. So if I look at the, the block that I've designed uh, last week, I had assigned the A net, B net, pilot net, T, T2, X max, X min. So in HydroCAD, when we run a, a net list command, which is under system and uh, it's here, net list, we run net list and touch the envelope. And now by default, Hydro, HydroCAD assigns a net uh, with a standard naming, net1, net2, net3, net4, net5, and so on. This is not a very complex block in terms of how many net. It may be complex in terms of how the connections are made, but uh, there may be really blocks with uh, 20, 30, 40 different nets. And uh, I have designed the blocks with much, much more complexity, but let's focus on a, on a simpler one. Uh, so you have the possibility to change net names. So now for me, this is my Tnet. That will be my X min. This would be my X max. And this one will be my pilot. Uh, this net will be named. And so we can look at the net name here. As you see, pilot T X max X min T. So I will use the same net. The, this one is my B net. This one is my A net, and here we have another tank T2. So when we touch each net, we will see them highlighted in the block, in the schematic. So it's easy to then uh, verify that uh, what we have made uh, 
in terms of connections. But giving good net name allows us to review the block and also to keep this information for, uh, for the further design. When we do a change in the diagram, having named the net will help us easily, easily with modification. And we will see later when we do the modification to the diagram. Now I'm going to import. So I click OK in order to freeze, to store this net information into the uh, hydro diagram. And now I'm going to export to MD2's all my manifold design. I don't need now to spend the time with defining preference on faces, on port position, and so on. I will just export my block and will put into my webinar. And that is my uh, circuit revision zero. So now I want to import this XML into my MD2's design and I want to compare with my MD2's design. So I will go to Hydro Schematic and uh, of course, uh, let me, what I will do normally if I had to start my design, I will start from scratch. I would uh, create my block. This is what you may already have seen in my, uh, during other webinars, I would load the diagram and we'll start placing components. This is the standard procedure, but uh, now I already have the block. So now when we import all the, all the components, all the, all the XML file, all the uh, items will be white. So we are able to insert in the block. And we have also then the engraving and, uh, and all the information, PC1 and all the net colored. But this is not what I want to do. Uh, so now when you place a component, it is grayed out. But now I close it and I import my diagram into the existing block. So I go to Hydro Schematic, Import, and I'll take my Circuit Revision 0. So now, as you can see, uh, MD2 is loading the file and all the components are grayed out. The fact that they are grayed out, it means that this component already exists in my, in my block. And in fact, the name of this item is PC1, exactly as it. So if I change this name and name it PC50, now PC1 will be missing. But my item is PC1, so I leave it as PC1. There cannot be two item PC1 in a block like there, there should not be two item PC1 in a, in a diagram. Every item should be unique. Either it is a port or it's a component. And uh, the same applies to MD2's data structure. So now I'm going to use uh, uh, an important command, which is the conformance to schematic check. It is this one here. So I have my block with all the cavities and all the nets. And I want to verify if my block is matching the diagram that I have imported. So let's run the schematic check and start it. So there are some uh, differences. So the cavity names in my model are uh, 11A3 instead of T11A. Uh, this is because when I did this design, I was using uh, uh, winner cavities, which have a different name than uh, the schematic, while in my schematic I have uh, T11A. T11A. This may be a minor difference, but uh, I really want to not have these differences. So I will just go and replace this cavity with my sun hydraulics and I take a T11A. I want to retain drill diameter depth and LS depth. I will replace all the similar cavities in the block so that uh, uh, MD2s will just replace the two cavities. And now if I do again the schematic check, uh, that issue will disappear, only RV1 and RV2. I'll do the same here, uh, replace this one with the T10A, all similar cavities, and the two cavities will be replaced. Again, schematic check. There is one difference here, which is important, SH. In the diagram, I had selected a smaller HIDAC valve uh, with a cavity 03030. 
but uh, during the design I had noticed that uh, it was very small so I decided to go for a larger one and so in this case uh, if I want really to match the diagram I will need to do the same and replace my cavity with uh, a HIDAC 03030 keeping maybe the same diameter depth and spot face and let's see what what happens we may need to do some slight modification to our design we may sink it deeply eight millimeter maybe something more 10 millimeter and now I can connect this cavity with the port number two and also I can connect this cavity with port number three so I have made my modification let's verify again a schematic check always now uh, everything is okay in this case uh, uh, the report is uh, giving giving me a warning that uh, in the diagram sh1 and sh2 are uh, inverted so it's a shuttle valve so really a shuttle valve has no as uh, hydraulic functions will take a signal for port one port three and send it to two so it's not really making any difference if the a or b is going on one on three this is the exact case so i made the connection not exactly like they were described in the diagram this is not in a problem and i'll stay with with this design i don't need i could switch cavity name here one and three port name one and three and that would would match this is really not relevant and not an issue so i will leave with this there are a lot of other issues in this case which are not so important but uh, you may end up with having some wrong port type so usually when you design starting from a, a diagram on paper you really don't care about the type of net the net type is important if you use the velocity check so the velocity check is here and will calculate velocities and will give you recommendation if you need to increase or reduce the emitter according to the oil velocity in a channel and this oil velocity is acceptable the velocity range changes according to tank net or pressure net so this is where we are using the type of a connection so in this case as you can see we have uh, some differences so if we want to get rid of all these uh, these warnings we should go into the model tab cavities and start changing x min this will be a pilot x min pilot and uh, this is a tank and so on and we start and this will keep reducing our uh, so this will be tank, pilot, pilot, pilot. And so we keep reducing this, uh, these issues. Let me do quickly. Uh, so PC1, it's tank, PC2, tank, and three is a pilot. I don't want to have any 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 difference tank in tank l tank rv1 tank rv2 tank rv3 tank and only the shuttle valve is missing pilot pilot rv3 tank so now there are no differences so i can say that my manifold is exactly like the like the diagram except for this sh1 and 3 which i may change in the diagram and i'll do later what is important to highlight and i always uh, uh, warn users uh, that uh, if the schematic conformance is okay 
So in this case, a schematic conformance is okay, no issues. That does not mean that your block is good because a schematic conformance will not verify that you have uh, made all the connection properly. Schematic conformance will only verify that the information attached to the components in the block are matching the information in the HydroCAD diagram, HydroCAD XML file. So like in this case, uh, this green net is open. So if I run a connection check, this will be a warning. This will be a mistake. And there will be a green net. And maybe there, there may be other issues in this design. Not many, but as you see, there are, uh, there are some drills that are not connected. A and B. So I do my connection. So it does not mean, uh, today I'm not going to do a complete design. I'm just going how to, to import and do verification in our, in our design. So let me save my block, and this will be my revision zero. Now I want to do a modification to, to the diagram and modify the block. I'll also run the machining ID in this block, uh, like if I had to make a machining drawing, because I'll show you later how to compare two design. Okay. And uh, let me save it and also save as revision 01. So this will be my revision 01. And that's a new block. Now I go back to the diagram and do a change to my diagram. So let me get rid of the title block. I'm not, let's not do anything difficult. Let's make some room here. Let's add, uh, let me copy this valve, copy and add it uh, here. Uh, this valve uh, will be named uh, RV4. RV4. And this valve will be connected uh, here. And we go to tank with a different setting 180 bar. Uh, then uh, I need to change the size of the import. So it's three by eight. I'll go here and select a different HIDAC valve. So I'll search in Fluid Power Tools and search and take a one by four size. So I'll do the opposite change that I have made earlier. And let me just add an additional uh, test point, gauge port on A2. I need a close symbol to the left. Not many changes. Let me add uh, an additional port. I add a P2 port, uh, BSP, which is ending uh, here and is connecting directly here. Not one by eight. Let me make it larger, three by eight. And let's add a check valve here. Let me take a HIDAC RV10A. Uh, rotate to the right and place on top of a connection line. This item is my CV1. And uh, Let me remake the connection. Okay, so now my let's apply these changes to my block. I had uh, already run the net list, so I will do again a net list, net for my block. Now HydroCAD will give me a warning. There are some changes, so I will need to recreate the net list. And as you see, there are some yellow exclamation mark. So by clicking recreate, now HydroCAD is running again the netlist. HydroCAD will try to keep the same net names. That's why it's important you rename net names because then it will be easier. Because if the net names are completely renamed, 
uh, then you will waste time uh, in checking what was the previous net name. So this is a, a better approach. Name net according to how you feel that they, they are good for your understanding of the schematic. This net, uh, let me call it P2, it's a new net. It was not there, pilot, and the other are existing. So I go through and I verify that all my information are correct and I click OK. Now I export again my block. Export and save my new XML file into, let's call it circuit 01. Now I'm going to import my new uh, XML file into the existing block. When you import, first operation is always run the schematic check. So once it is imported, we'll do the schematic check. As you see, some white items are here. Let's run the schematic check. Missing items and wrong cavity. Uh, let's do the wrong cavity first. So in is a three by eight. Let me find it. Uh, replace this cavity with a BSP port three by eight. And the cavity here was a uh, HIDAC 05030. And now we can go back to the previous uh, situation, connect. And connect. And maybe we increase this diameter to five millimeter. Uh, let's do again the schematic check. So as you can see, I have no more wrong cavity. Everything is okay, always the shuttle valve, but I miss items. So let me start adding the components. As always here, the approach can be different. I like the approach of going by net. So I go to net A and I see I need a check valve with port number two. So let me, add material below i need to add a check valve here so uh, let me put the check valve somewhere here there will be not much space let me add more material 120 I will not do my best block here. I need to connect construction port on port number two on the bottom face and stretch it. And let me move it uh, up. P2, insert, and I'll put my P2 maybe here. And stretch to make an offset connection. Then I need MA2, insert. So I place my MA2 here and connect with cavity port number one in the center. Let's see what else is missing. We miss an additional relief valve. Let me put it somewhere uh, here. Orange with orange. Let me change face to this cavity here and connect. And I can add another construction plug. Well, no, we can just do connect. And we can create a construction port.
everything looks in place. Let's start with the schematic check. Good, so now the block is matching the, the new diagram. And of course, I should be running all the connection check, wall thickness check, and so on. But in this last two minutes, I want to show you something else, which probably you never used, or if uh, I think most of you never, never really explored a bit the uh, um, compare manifold. So let me run again the machining ID. And when we run the machining ID, remember that you have these options, keep existing machining ID. Keep existing machining ID. If you already have a block with machining ID, we'll keep the, that naming. So I will click OK. And now that's my block saved. Now I can compare my new block with the revision zero. I use the, the machining ID because uh, when we compare block, uh, really this operation may make sense more for the for uh, the manufacturing. So I usually use the machining ID in the manufacturing drawing. But uh, as you can see, you have the possibility to use the component ID and machining ID to compare. So I can comp start comparing the two blocks. So as you can see, there are differences in the size of the block. Of course, I had to make it taller. So the revision one is this one and is 120 versus 90 millimeter. There are new items in the block number one. So they are missing in the block number two. Machining ideas. Rename the machine is ID means that uh, since uh, there are some components that change face, the cavity that change face that cannot have that uh, the old machining ID because my machining ID has uh, also rules by face. So old machining ID became new machining ID. I have replaced the cavities. So item 101 in the block. It was uh, 03030, but now it's 05030. The cavity, it was 1 by 4, now it's 3 by 8. And then there are changes in diameter. If you remember, when I changed the plugs, there were different diameters. So now we have a 5 millimeter instead of 3 millimeter drill. And also step 12 changed. The depth of the drill has changed between the two blocks. In addition, I have moved some cavities. 107, 201, 501 I have changed the position. This cavity has changed the face. It was the plug, this plug that was from down and now it's, it's up. So it was in the bottom face and now it's on the top face. With uh, the location is the same because really I put in the same position, but I simply made it uh, upside down. And also the other cavities moved because I moved the, the plugs that were connecting to the shuttle valve. Some engravings were not there. So the new cavities have new engravings. They were not in the old block. And I have moved some engravings from the face. So in this case, uh, with this command, you really have a picture of all the differences. Uh, so also managing the revision uh, uh, between two different versions of, uh, of a similar files may be, may be handy by using the compare manifolds.